Happy New Year from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for joining today's webinar, Japan-U.S. Aerospace Cooperation Seminar 2022. My name is Saki Hirama, and I'm the Space Promotion and Research Specialist at JAXA Washington, D.C. office. Today, we are very pleased to have the opportunity to present JAXA's latest update and host discussion on Japan-U.S. cooperation in space exploration. First, I'd like to share some housekeeping items for this webinar. This webinar will be archived on JAXA's YouTube channel after the live streaming, and you will be able to access the recording using the same link. Also, we are not taking questions from the audience during the event, but please do not hesitate to contact JAXA Washington, D.C. office if you have any comments or questions regarding today's webinar or JAXA's program. Shown on the screen is today's program. As you can see, we have a wonderful lineup of speakers today. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Ishii Yasuo, Vice President of JAXA, to deliver remarks. Hello, everyone. I'm Ishii Yasuo, a JAXA Vice President for International Relations, and I'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Thank you for joining us today for the Japan-U.S. Aerospace Cooperation Seminar 2022. I'm honored to open this seminar to celebrate the wonderful partnership between Japan and the United States and to look forward to its further development. For deepening the already robust relationship between Japan and the United States, the aerospace sector plays a major role, as evidenced by the fact that its cooperation was mentioned at the Japan-U.S. summit last year. In particular, JAXA and NASA have built a long-standing and genuine relationship over many years, and we are proud to have been able to share many accomplishments together. Even during this difficult time due to COVID-19 pandemic, NASA and JAXA have continued to develop cooperation in various areas in 2021 for a bright and exciting future. For example, astronaut Noguchi, the first non-American aboard Crew Dragon, and astronaut Hoshide, who served as commander, returned from the ISS last year. The safe and steady execution of human spaceflight at the ISS is a fruit of integrated operation between JAXA and NASA. Also, uh, in this past December, the U.S. announced its decision to extend the operation of ISS until 2030. JAXA will support the Japanese government to move forward through discussions concerning the extension. JAXA hopes to continue to work with NASA to promote activities on this unique and fruitful orbiting station. In the same manner as the ISS program, JAXA is engaged in space exploration through international cooperation. Based on the Artemis Accords and the Pan-U.S. Memorandum of Understanding on Gateway, the coordination is now underway with partners from space agencies, private companies, and academia from around the world. Recently, the Japanese government revised the implementation plan of the Basic Plan on Space Policy revealing a new goal of landing a Japanese astronaut on the moon in the late 2020s. I am pleased that we can mark the dawn of a new era of cooperation between Japan and the United States. Through the space sector, Japan and the U.S. have been contributing to the fight against climate change, which is a common global issue. As one of our future co contributions, JAXA would like to cooperate with NASA as an international partner in the new Earth System Observatory, which NASA announced last year, specifically by participating in the aerosol, cloud, convection, and precipitation mission. We believe that we can continue to play an important role for both Japan and the United States by further developing our cooperative relation with NASA in the field of Earth science, which has spanned over two decades. 
In closing, I would like to express my gratitude to the US government and NASA for their strong leadership. And I hope that 2022 will be a safe and wonderful year for all of you who are watching this Japan-US Aerospace Cooperation Seminar. Thank you, and please enjoy the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Ishii. Next, it's my great pleasure to invite Ms. Karen Feldstein, Associate Administrator for International and Interagency Relations of NASA, to give remarks. Hello everyone and Happy New Year to all. I'm Karen Feldstein, Associate Administrator for International and Interagency Relations at NASA. I'm incredibly appreciative to the JAXA Washington DC office for the opportunity to join you today and celebrate our partnership and all that we're accomplishing in space together. I certainly hope to see you in person next year. First, I'd like to recognize JAXA President Yamakawa for his outstanding leadership as well as our partners in the government of Japan, particularly at MAXT, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Cabinet Office, and the Japanese Embassy here in Washington. Our cooperation in space is as close and wide ranging as the rest of the relationship between the United States and Japan. JAXA is one of the few partners with whom our national objectives in civil space and aeronautics are fully aligned. For over half a century, as most of you know, we've collaborated on meaningful projects ranging from aviation research to providing Earth observation and climate data, and from space science missions that help unlock the mysteries of our universe to technologies that will extend human presence beyond low Earth orbit. One of the very best examples continues to be the incredible collaboration on the International Space Station through which we've enabled pioneering discoveries to improve the lives of citizens here on Earth. In addition to Japan's important contributions to research on Kibo, JAXA continues to provide crucial HTV cargo resupply missions to the station. 2021 was a highly accomplished year for Japan on ISS, with the continuation of Soichi Noguchi's mission having launched the ISS on Crew-1, the very first operational Crew Dragon mission, and I was at the Kennedy Space Center to witness and enjoy the beautiful launch of Aki Hoshide, who later took command of the space station. And we can't wait for the return of Koichi Wakata to the ISS on the Crew-5 mission later this year. With the U.S. decision to extend the ISS through 2030, we look forward to supporting Japan's own deliberations on extending operations of this remarkable laboratory through the rest of the decade. And of course, to continuing to define Japan's contributions to the gateway and our future activities on the lunar surface. In a hugely significant milestone, Japan is partnering on the upcoming historic Artemis I mission with two Japanese CubeSats Equilius and Omotenashi being among the science and technology payloads being deployed to deep space. There are so many groundbreaking science missions and work to help prepare for future human exploration, such as JAXA's Martian Moon Explorer mission, MMX, which will again demonstrate Japan's unparalleled expertise and success in sample return, as well as SLIM and CRISM, which have continued despite the challenges of COVID. Also impressive and never more timely is our climate related work. Using the power of our collective data, the COVID-19 Earth Observation Dashboard informs the world of the impacts to changes in air and war quality, water quality, climate change, economic activity, and agriculture. Never has that been more important as critical global efforts to address climate change depend on open, trusted, and verifiable scientific data as the underpinnings of action. Building upon the successful Earth Science collaboration on GPM, NASA and JAXA are collaborating on studies for NASA's Earth System Observatory mission, Aerosols, Clouds, Convection, and Precipitation. ACCP will deliver key data for improved forecasts of weather, air quality, and climate. And finally, we continue to push boundaries in aeronautics research in areas of priority interest to both our nations, such as sustainable aviation. And we look forward to JAXA testing NASA's supersonic aircraft model in the coming months. 
I would like to thank JAXA Washington, D.C. Office Director Masami Onoda and Deputy Director Kota Umeda for your unflagging support and close coordination, along with our NASA representative in Tokyo, Garvey McIntosh. As all of you observe every single day, the mutual bene mutually beneficial partnership between NASA and JAXA continues to flourish, and we look forward to a wonderful 2022. Thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful remarks. Now we would like to move on to the updates of JAXA programs. The presentation will be delivered by Mr. Shoji Yoshikazu, Director of International Relations and Research Department, JAXA. It will be followed by a QA and a session moderated by Mr. Umeda Kota, Deputy Director at JAXA Washington, D.C. office. Thank you, Saki, for your kind introduction. My name is Shoji, Director, International Relations and Research Department of JAXA. Today, I'd like to introduce JAXA program updates and fiscal year 2022 budget, as well as Japan-US Aerospace Corporation. I will start with an overview of JAXA. As for Japan's governing structure for space activities, the strategic headquarters for national space policy headed by the Prime Minister, plans and formulates the basic plan on space policy. This space policy is implemented by various ministries and agencies involved in space activities. JAXA is positioned as a core implementing agency to support the Japanese government's activities in the field of aerospace with technology. Regarding Japan's space policy, the basic plan on space policy was enacted in 2009, and this plan is revised every few years. In the June 2020 revision, the following was set as the goals of Japan's space policy. First, ensuring space security. Second, contributing to disaster management, national resilience, and resolving global issues. Third, creation of new knowledge through space science and exploration. Fourth, economic growth and innovation for which space is the driving force. And fifth, strengthening the comprehensive foundation of Japan's space activities, including industrial, scientific, and technological basis. Based on this revision, JAXA's medium to long-term goals, as well as the medium to long-term plans, have been revised. And with the addition of an aviation-related goal, which is to promote the aviation industry and strengthen its international comp com competitiveness. Based on our research and development plan, the goals setting our medium to long-term plan consists of these six pillars. In addition, the implementation plan of the basic plan on space policy is revised at the end of each year. And at the end of last month, a new goal in the revised implementation plan was announced, which includes a landing of a Japanese astronaut on the moon in the late 2020s. Regarding JAXA's budget, we have requested 155.2 billion yen for fiscal year 2022. If this budget is approved, together with the already approved supplementary budget, JAXA's 2022 budget will be 223.8 billion yen, which is approximately $2 billion. We see this trend of JAXA budget increase as a strong support from the Japanese government. And the 2022 budget is expected to be approved by the Diet in March this year. As for the number of, of employees, we have about 1,500 working for JAXA. Next. I'd like to talk about Japan-US Space Corporation. The US 
especially NASA and JAXA, have been working closely together for many years in a wide range of fields. I believe that our long-standing and sincere relationship of trust has led to a series of joint missions that will be undertaken in the coming years. First, in the field of space science, Hayabusa 2 has successfully completed its, its return to Earth and capsule recovery operation in December 2020, and it is now flying interplanetary to explore the next small celestial body. As for the recovered samples, the curation team has started particle analysis, and we delivered the Hayabusa 2 samples to NASA last November, as we promised to exchange samples with uh, NASA's Osiris X. We are also developing CRISM, X-ray Imaging and Spectroscopy Mission, as an international joint project with NASA and ESA, European Space Agency. The mission aims to reveal the origin of large-scale structures formed by stars, galaxies, and clusters of galaxies by measuring the elements and their speed in the hot gas plasma wind that blows across stars, galaxies, and the space between them. Human spaceflight activities are also prog progressing actively. Astronaut Noguchi, the first non-American aboard Crew Dragon, returned safely to Earth in May last year. And astronaut Hoshide returned to Earth by Crew 2 in November last year. Hoshide successfully fulfilled his role as the commander. At the end of last year, the United States announced its decision to extend the ISS operation until 2030. I understand that the Japanese government will be discussing this issue in the future, and JAXA plans to provide appropriate support to the Japanese government from a technical standpoint. With astronauts Wakata and Furukawa scheduled to stay on the ISS for an extended period of time, and the fact that we have started our recruiting of new astronauts, I think we are reaching a new milestone in terms of human spaceflight. We hope that Japan-US cooperation will lead to the operation and utilization of gateway, exploration of lunar resources, and sustained activities on the moon. NASA's Artemis 1, which is scheduled for launch soon, will carry JAXA's CubeSats, Omot Energy, and Eclipse. And JAXA, together with NASA and ESA, is accelerating, accelerating preparation for MMX, Martian Moon's Exploration Mission, scheduled for launch in 2024. And next, in the field of Earth science, I hope that we can continue to develop our corporate cooperative relationship with NASA in the field of precipitation, which has lasted over 20 years with TRIM, Tropical Rainfall Measuring Mission, and GPM, Global Precipitation Measurement, and jointly contribute to addressing climate change. As part of our current efforts to address climate change, we have also launched GOSAT 1 and 2 for greenhouse gas observation. These Earth observation data are also used in the COVID-19 dashboard, where JAXA is collaborating with NASA and ESA, contributing to the joint analysis to understand changes in the global environment and economic activities. I think this is a good example of international collaboration and complementary use of satellite data. Finally, I would like to briefly introduce JAXA's future plans. With regard to Earth observation satellites, to realize a safe and secure society, the advanced optical satellite AROS-3 and the advanced radar satellite AROS-4 are scheduled to be launched in the future.
we are also working to create aircraft concepts and key technologies to realize technological innovations in air transportation systems, such as the application of new energy sources like fossil fuel free and electric propulsion. The H3 rocket is now at the peak of its development and preparations are underway for the launch of the first test vehicle. In the field of space science, there are so many missions, both in operation and under development, in order to realize more advanced space activities and to understand the origin and the evolution of the solar system and its biosphere. We began the recruitment of new Japanese astronaut candidates at the end of last month. I hope that Japanese astronauts will play an active role in the international team for sustained activities on the moon and beyond. Today, I have introduced a variety of topics from Jackson's overview to Japan-US cooperation. And I'd like to conclude my presentation by asking for your continued support and cooperation. In closing, I'd like to wish you all a wonderful new year. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, thank you, Shoji-san, uh, for your presentation. Uh, my name is Umeda Kouta, Deputy Director at the JAXA Washington DC office. I'd like to ask you a uh, follow few follow-up questions, which uh, many people might be interested in. Okay, good morning, Kota. Uh, it is quite unfortunate that I cannot go to Washington DC this time and not to meet you in person because of this pandemic situation. So last time I, I came to Washington DC was two years ago, January 2020, on the occasion of the uh, JAXA seminar. I do hope that in the very near future, I can go to Washington DC and see you all. Yes, we very much hope so. Well, um, let's start off the, uh, you know, this session, uh, starting from the budget. Um, in your presentation, Choji-san, you mentioned the total uh, figure of the you know, JAXA budget, uh, but could you a uh, little bit you know, more explain about the details of the JAXA budget for fiscal 2022 and also outlook for the future? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, the draft budget for fiscal year 2022 was released last month by the Japanese government. And for JAXA, it exceeded $2 billion for the second year in a row. And as I mentioned earlier, it is significant for JAXA to maintain this level of budget. And I see this as a strong support from the Japanese government. And uh, looking at the breakdown, the space science and exploration have increased their weight. And JAXA has requested about uh, $370 million for research and development for the Artemis program. The main items are $39 million for the Cislunar Orbiting Platform Gateway and $177 million for the new resupply vehicle, HCVX, and $86 million for the Mars Satellite Sample Return Mission, MMX. Thank you. Um, it's quite encouraging to see the strong support from the Japanese government. Um, second question is about the Artemis program. So now NASA, NASA's Artemis 1 is to be launched um, you know, quite soon, and JAXA has begun the recruitment of the new you know, Japanese astronaut. So as an international partner, how is Japan planning to participate in this uh, Artemis program in the future? Okay, uh, about a year ago, in December 2020, the Memorandum of Understanding on the Gateway was signed between the Japanese government and NASA. I'm aware that uh, Japan's contribution to the Artemis program and the participation of, this, uh, uh, of the Japanese astronauts will be discussed and coordinated between the government of Japan and the US and NASA based on the Gateway MOU. 
At the end of last month, Prime Minister Kishida has announced a new goal of landing a Japanese astronaut on the moon in the late 2020s. And JAXA will support the Japanese government in achieving this goal. Thank you. Um, now I want to touch upon the Japan space policy. Last month, the Japanese government revised the implementation plan of Japan's basic, basic plan on space policy. How would you know, JAXA uh, contribute to this new plan? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, the uh, implementation plan of the basic plan on space policy is a roadmap that defines Japanese government's space programs, which is revised at the end of each year. And uh, JAXA's projects are carried out based on this roadmap. And uh, regarding the revision last December, in addition to the continued inter implementation of the current plan, one of the significant additional points for JAXA is the study of participation in the aerosol, cloud, convection, and precipitation mission planned by NASA in the field of Earth science. And for the uh, international space exploration, the plan sets a new goal to land a Japanese astronaut on the moon in the late 2020s. And also, it states that the Japanese government will consider the extension of ISS operation after 2025, taking the fact the United States government announced its decision to extend it until 2030 at the end of last year. And uh, moreover, the plan adds the new initiative, which requires developing technologies to coordinate the operation of large and small satellite constellations in partnership with industries. And JAXA will continue to carry out research and development in order to meet the expectations of the national public and the government. Thank you very much. That's very, very exciting. Um, my final question is, um, what do you expect for the future uh, Japan-US cooperation? Yes, thank you very much. This is a very important point. Uh, the cooperation in uh, aerospace between Japan and the United States is based on trust and it has been developed through long-standing efforts by so many people of both countries. In the past two years, the pandemic made it difficult for us to travel to and from Japan and the US. However, the uh, aerospace cooperation between the two countries has been strengthened. And JAXA would like to further strengthen collaboration with the US in many areas, including the uh, Artemis program, ISS, and human spaceflight activities, Earth science, space science, and uh, space situational awareness, and aeronautics. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, we have to conclude this session. Uh, Shoji san, um, again, thank you very much uh, for today's uh, presentation and the Q&A session. I also appreciate the audience to watch this session. Thank you very, thank much. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Shoji and Mr. Umeda for the great presentation and discussion. The next program will be a fireside chat with Professor Scott Pace. The session will be moderated by Dr. Onoda Masami, Director of JAXA Washington DC office. Thank you for the introduction, Saki. My name is Onoda Masami, the head of JAXA Washington DC office. Today, I'm very excited and privileged to have a wonderful guest speaker with us, Professor Scott Pace. Professor Pace is Director of Space Policy Institute, George Washington University, and he has previously served as Executive Secretary of National Space Council from 2017 to 2020. His invaluable contribution to Japan-US space cooperation is widely recognized, not just in the US, of course, but also in Japan. So, Professor Pace, it is great to have you today, and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here with you and uh, to talk about one of my favorite subjects, U.S.-Japan space cooperation. 
wonderful. It's great to know it's that that it's your favorite subject. It's also my favorite too. So, um, it's been about a year since your return to the Space Policy Institute. Um, I might just dive into our question. Let me start from asking you, how do you see the development in the one year uh, since you uh, returned to Space Policy Institute in the space scene in US? Um, what, 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 how would you describe that? Um, well, I think one of the main things that, that's happened um, in the last year that I'm actually very grateful for is not much change. Um, I think that we all in the space community recognize the importance of stability uh, and sustainability of activities, uh, that space is hard and takes a long time. Uh, and so uh, making sure that there are not massive policy changes and priority shifts um, and that we keep up a steady effort is really important. So uh, I've been very grateful that the new administration has, of course, continued not only the Artemis program, uh, but also continuing things like the Space Force. Uh, that has uh, continuing to have a space council. Uh, of course, they have uh, their own priorities. Uh, so they've placed an increased emphasis on uh, STEM education, increased emphasis on climate change uh, issues, um, but uh, that's perfectly normal. And uh, so the fact that uh, uh, there's been a kind of continuity of purpose, uh, I think is, uh, is the main thing that's happened or not happened in the last year. And uh, I think that's all good. Yes, um, I was also relieved to see the continuity, relieved and also encouraged. Um, and I, I think we, the space agencies were all international partners. We're all very happy to see that we can continue on the work that we have been doing. Um, so in uh, that uh, context, Last month, uh, our Prime Minister Kishida announced the revision of the roadmap of Japan's basic plan on space policy. And the revised uh, schedule includes Japan's intention to land a Japanese astronaut on the moon in the latter half of the 2020s. Now, given that statement and recent development of Japan's space programs, where do you see Japan stands now and how do you foresee the future of Japan space programs? Um, and also, uh, what are the unique roles that Japan uh, can or is expected to play in this international arena, such as the transition in the low Earth orbit and the Artemis program? Okay. Um, well, first of all, again, very, uh, very happy with the, the statements of uh, Prime Minister Kishida again, continuing and strengthening the path that uh, Japan had been taking. Uh, so I, I think in terms of sustainability and stability on the Japanese side for space, uh, I, I think that's been very welcome. Uh, I think one of the things uh, in thinking about Japan's role uh, is something that I've said, I think in public as well as in private, um, which is that it, it will proceed as we've done with the space station program. Uh, that is, uh, people make contributions to a common effort, and then they take part in the benefits from those common efforts. Uh, if uh, uh, a country, a partner helps us uh, get to lunar orbit, uh, we will help them get to lunar orbit. If a country helps us get to the lunar surface, we will help them get to the lunar surface. Uh, these things are not always 50-50, uh, exactly equal, and so forth, but uh, the people who put most effort into the partnership are the ones, of course, who should uh, who should benefit the most. And uh, this is what's happened with space station, um, and uh, this is what I think will be happening with exploration. And Japan has already, uh, you know, made uh, proposals uh, and directions for contributions that would help us get to the lunar surface in the terms of a mobile uh, pressurized HAB facility, uh, which I think would be is a terrific, you know, contribution. Uh, and, and that and other things will, um, I think, help ensure that we'll all be together on the moon. Um, our European colleagues have also talked about having, you know, European astronauts out at the moon. Um, so far, they've talked about, um, you know, operations really in lunar orbit. So they're making uh, contributions to the Gateway uh, program. And so I can absolutely see European astronauts, of course, with us, uh, you know, out at, uh, out at Gateway as well. Um, I think we all have a lot to work to do to define 
uh, the lunar architecture uh, you know, in greater detail. We, we all understand the general direction. We all understand, I think, the general technologies. Um, uh, we'll need to uh, develop and build on uh, the experience of the multilateral coordination board, uh, which right now, uh, of course, exists for space station, uh, does also handle gateway. Uh, we don't quite have, and maybe you know more than I do uh, on this, that we don't quite have that for the moon yet because uh, we don't have the architecture uh, as well defined. And uh, the intergovernmental agreements that we have right now um, can certainly include gateway, but uh, probably the lunar surface is, is a bit beyond the existing intergovernmental agreements. So how we should structure uh, that cooperation to capture uh, these principles that we've developed over the last several decades of working together uh, is still work to be done. Absolutely. If we look back one uh, year or so, uh, it was a very, um, for my position, a stressful time when we were uh, trying to sign the uh, Gateway MOU. Now that it's done, it seems that it was meant to be there for the whole time, but it was very uh, not not so easy at that time. And to get that done was a, a very much of a heavy lift for uh, our governments. I'm very glad that it's there now, um, and we're trying to build on that. And as you say, um, we do have the Artemis Artemis Accords. I think that is great, uh, but we still have a long way till. Uh, well, first defining the architecture and then discussing the international um, agreements um, and to define how we want to uh, work together in this, uh, well, uh, in, in a sense, new um, uh, domain uh, where we will be sustainably this time uh, going to. So I think this is really a challenge that we have and a, a great challenge for this year. Uh, we will certainly be focusing our efforts um, in, in uh, discussing this. Uh, so thank you for raising that. Um, so also this, um, our basic plan on space policy uh, that we, um, uh, revised last year um, is an annual revision. Um, also talks about economic security, uh, carbon neutrality. Uh, I guess that's uh, what we more commonly call net zero um, here in the United States and the importance of cooperation through the quad dialogue. Um, what do you think of the political implications of countries like Japan, uh, the US and others working together? Um, in these areas? Well, I, I think it's, I think it's terrific. I think that, um, I think that the quad, uh, in particular, uh, has a lot of, uh, of promise. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, why, uh, I, I think the quad, uh, is, uh, is, is particularly helpful is that it, it incentivizes the participants to think in a kind of a more holistic manner, instead of looking at, say, bilateral commercial cooperation or just uh, bilateral security cooperation, um, it, it tends to force a look at uh, a more comprehensive approach. Now, the US and Japan have had a comprehensive approach on space, of course, for a long time. Uh, Japan has been part of the US, of course, is the first and so far only, there may be more, we'll see about France, um, but a comprehensive uh, dialogue on space. And so I think the US and Japan are very used to uh, thinking about security and commercial and civil as all part of the relationship, um, each kind of unique and different, but but all part of a whole. Uh, I think the quad is promising for also thinking about our relationships in this larger whole. That is, um, if we improve capabilities for space situational awareness, that's good not only for civil and commercial reasons, but it's also good for security reasons. If we approve, uh, improve our maritime domain awareness, uh, again, using space assets, that's good uh, for environmental purposes and you know, against illegal fishing, uh, but it's also good for security purposes in terms of making sure all countries are talking to each other and sharing information with each other. Um, so the, to me, the quad is kind of like a natural counterpart to the kind of comprehensive approach that the US and Japan have already been taking for many years. Thank you. Um, 
I also saw that um, this time the uh, well, we set up a space working group and that's going to be working on the uh, specifics. Uh, it is. Uh, in a sense, I think uh, the, the focus of the quads is is broader than just security now and it's, it's good that we are trying to um, talk about. Uh, different areas, not not just narrowly defined, but in the broad sense for data sharing and using that in um, different areas. I think that is that is a very valuable effort that we can do um, in a um, multilateral um, way as well. Um, so, uh, looking ahead now, what can we do to maintain and further develop this great international partnership uh, that we of we have nourished through uh, the um, ISS, the International Space Station program, um, and then now going on uh, to go to the moon and even beyond to Mars and beyond. Uh, what do you think that uh, we can do to further um, this uh, great relationship between us? Well, I think it's, um... I think it's a matter of broadening and, and deepening areas that that are already present. Um, now we've built up, I, I think this is really great relationship in the International Space Station. Uh, but of course, as we know, the International Space Station won't live forever. Uh, so uh, we've made, uh, the US has made a decision and others have uh, accepted this. The Congress is supportive of extending ISS operations through 2030. Uh, but those of us who are, of course, have been on the technical side of programs, we know the hardware gets a vote, um, and the hardware will ultimately decide what's what's safe and what what can be done. Um, and also, the budget uh, is an issue. I think uh, we've seen strong support from the U.S. Congress and also from the Japanese Diet, uh, which I think again we're grateful for. Uh, and uh, but the amount of monies that we spend uh, in low Earth orbit uh, needs to come down. Uh, in order to free up money for exploration. I think we have opportunities uh, to do that uh, in terms of uh, after the ISS program, uh, and things of smaller uh, human tended platforms. Maybe they're not continually crewed, but uh, uh, have people uh, visit them. Uh, multiple platforms, maybe some in polar, some in a, a space station orbit, maybe some in low Earth orbit. Um, so having a greater diversity of small platforms of uh, taking advantage of lower launch costs uh, that uh, have been made uh, made possible by some of our companies uh, is a way to lower those costs. Um, and we need to, again, think in a more holistic manner about how our activities in low Earth orbit will help transition out toward um, exploration in cislunar space and, and beyond. And how things we might develop uh, in cislunar space, like power and propulsion elements and things for gateway can come back and benefit us in low earth orbit. So the, instead of looking at a single facility in the case of the ISS, uh, we're gonna be looking at kind of the entire cislunar infrastructure and what parts each, each group is going to play in that. So I think that's an opportunity for greater commercial cooperation as an opportunity uh, for greater government to government cooperation uh, you know, as we transition to this, uh, this larger picture. Um, so, uh, uh, I think that, uh, in addition to the civil and commercial side, which I know is, is what JAXA's focus is on, of course, uh, I think we also envision greater cooper security cooperation and greater cooperation with the, um, with the Japanese ministry of defense and with, uh, other ASEAN countries, um, again, for sharing, uh, information. Uh, you know, from space and to take advantage of uh, the pioneering work that has already been done on the civil side. Thank you. Um, this holistic approach um, and also to the importance to align the larger policy um, uh, needs and demands um, with our space programs ultimately I think is is really important and what you have just described is is asking us to just to do that um, so I see uh, for us a lot to still do uh, I 
but I could just also add as a great news to start this new year um, uh, to let everybody know that uh, your invaluable contribution to Japan-US space cooperation uh, was recognized by the Japanese government that uh, last November you were awarded the Order of the Rising Sun Gold and Silver Star. Uh, from the Japanese government, and we are very happy for that and wish to uh, work with you uh, ever more to uh, try to shape our future space program uh, in a way that we could all uh, benefit for, for our uh, everyday life and also for the future of our, our great space programs. Um, do you have anything to add? Well, no, thank you. I, that the award was quite a was quite a surprise and quite a an amazing honor. Um, so it's uh, not something that uh, that I, I expected, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's something that um, uh, I think is really really uh, important, not only to me sort of personally, but also that the Japanese government recognized the importance of space cooperation by itself, separate from me. But that space cooperation was an important part of the US Japan relationship, you know, at this level. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm appreciative of that recognition, not only for myself, but really for the space community as a whole. Thank you so much, Professor Pace. Um, so I think with this happy note, we can conclude our new year talk. In Japanese, I would call this uh, um, a Shinshun Taidan. Uh, a New Year's um, uh, conversation. Um, so I think it was a great way to to kick off our New Year. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. Domo, arigatou gozaimasu. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you very much, Professor Pace and Dr. Onoda. That was a very enlightening discussion. We are almost at the end of today's program, but before we close, we have a special video from JAXA astronaut. Kanai Norishige. Happy New Year. I'm Norishige Kanai, JAXA astronaut. Last year, 2021, was a remarkable year for JAXA as we had two long duration space missions successfully on the International Space Station, the ISS, by Soichi Noguchi and Aki Hoshide. Their activity in space have brightened Japanese people in pandemic situation. The fact also needs to be noted that their flights to and from the ISS were made by US commercial vehicle, which opened up a new era of human space program. Commercialization in space field has been now well recognized worldwide. Later this year, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata will fly to the ISS, also on the U.S. commercial vehicle. We really appreciate the support for these space flights, dedication and the hard work of our colleagues from NASA, governmental organizations, as well as private companies in the United States, despite of difficult situation due to COVID-19. Japan and the United States have a long collaborative history in space field. JAXA astronauts, variety of areas of scientific research and cutting edge technology demonstration in microgravity and HTB cargo supply missions to the ISS are just a few of the examples. Together with Japanese commercial companies, JAXA is now developing new generation space cargo vehicle called HTBX, Lunar Rover, and the Environmental Control and the Life Support System for Future Exploration. This year, JAXA will select new astronaut candidates for the first time in 13 years. They are expected, expected to work on the US-led manned lunar exploration, Artemis. As the Prime Minister of Japan, Fumio Kishida recently announced the revised basic plan on space policy, compiled by the Strategic Headquarters for National Space Policy. We all hope to see the first Japanese astronaut landing on the moon in late 2020. Through space collaboration, Japan, 
US partnership will become more and more strong and close. We really look forward to the continuous work together with friends and colleagues in the United States and other international partners for the future of humanity. Sustainable human activities in low Earth orbit, on the moon, and beyond. That was such an inspiring message from astronaut Kanai. So this marks the end of today's program. Thank you very much for your participation. If you have any question regarding today's webinar or JAXA's program, please feel free to contact JAXA Washington DC office. Happy New Year to you and have a great rest of the day.